What killed Lightwave? I know the title will set some people typing that Lightwave has not in fact been killed. To be honest though, Lightwave is not a significant force in the world of 3D software. This is sad because Lightwave was once one of the heavy hitters back in its heyday. Many Emmys were won by companies running Lightwave. Still long gone are the days of Babylon 5 and Sequest. So what happened to Lightwave? Lightwave was the first time I seriously used a 3D modeling and animation program, and for a while I got really into it. My Star Wars fan film Lord Vader's Trial was done entirely in Lightwave. Even so, working on that film in Lightwave exposed its serious flaws to me. Flaws that even to this day have never been fully addressed. My experience in the Lightwave community leads me to the conclusion that Lightwave became irrelevant due to an inability to change, a loss of key talent, and an actively hostile user community. First, some history on Lightwave, because as we will see, the early history of Lightwave set the software up for its eventual descent into irrelevance. Lightwave began as part of the video toaster, exclusively on the Amiga system. Let's have a moment for the Amiga. The video toaster was an all-in-one video production suite, which allowed for video capture, compositing, editing, and integration with 3D graphics using Lightwave. Eventually, Lightwave became so popular, people began to refer to the video toaster as a dongle that let you run Lightwave. New Tech eventually spun Lightwave off into a standalone version, and it was a big hit. At the time, the only real competition for 3D animation was Soft Image, which ran exclusively on expensive SLI machines, and 3D Studio. It wasn't even called Max yet. Lightwave was much, much cheaper than those, and able to mimic some real-world camera effects such as lens flare, which at the time was a big deal. In these days, computer memory was ridiculously expensive, so programs had to develop tricks to allow large scenes to be developed with limited resources. Lightwave accomplished this by having the modeler and layout be separate programs that kind of work together. Much of the initial design of Lightwave made sense in the day. Along came Maya and 3ds Max. These software packages boasted an entire rewrites of the code base. Before the Max version, 3D Studio had an unwieldy system of rooms, and it ran in DOS. Autodesk smartly rewrote the whole system from the ground up. Maya also boasted an integrated environment where you could model and animate in one screen. Max and Maya quickly took over the high-end industries of gaming and film, respectively. Lightwave was being used primarily in television production, as well as by small TV stations and independent production studios. Many of these users could not afford the hardware upgrades to run Modeler and Lightwave or layout simultaneously. So Newtech New never addressed the issue of the software being separated. As Autodesk took over more and more of the 3D graphics market, Lightwave bunkered down into the independent desktop video market. Again, these users could not afford major hardware upgrades. So Lightwave simply added new features onto the already behind the times design of the original software. There was incredible resistance to change in the Lightwave community. I would regularly read on forums or hear from users in person their disdain for the idea of a total code base reboot. Even something as innocuous as auto key uh, for animation, a basic feature all animation software has, was referred to as auto scene destroy. The majority of users were afraid of a radical redesign. I've known many independent video producers and one once they have a set of hardware and software that works for them, they're terrified of changing anything. They did not want to learn a new way of doing things, even if it was superior to what they had. Hardware and memory became cheaper, and the prices of the high-end graphics programs started to fall. Maya was once $14,000 per seat. It now costs $4,000. Max was even a little cheaper. Soft Image was finally liberated from the SLI platform. Suddenly, the little guys could afford uh, something other than Lightwave. At the same time, some of Newtech's best and brightest were getting increasingly frustrated with the lack of innovation with the, the company. This led uh, to Newtech's vice president of 3D development, Brad Peebler, leaving to form Luxology, and he took some of Newtech's best developers with him. They created Moto, which is today regarded as one of the best 3D uh, software out there. Lightwave had, up till now, been able to keep just behind the curve of software advancements. They added subdivision surfaces and updated the render engine. They made a few lame attempts to address the horrible character animation tools. The result was the disastrous skeletons. But eventually, this inability to change, as well as the brain drain at the company, caught up to it. Lightwave started to bleed users. The price was reasonable, but then along came the open source software Blender. Blender version 2.4 had a horrible UI, but it was free. 
The 2.5 update did what Lightwave can never bring itself to, a complete overhaul of the UI. Even the high-end software like Maya and Max became cheaper and even free for students. The final nail in the coffin of Lightwave was the user community. As previously stated, the users helped to retard the development of Lightwave at a crucial time. As many users left for other platforms, the only ones on the forums were the Lightwave hipsters. If you didn't like the way Lightwave was set up or you found a software killing bug, the problem was you, never Lightwave. It became one of the most toxic groups I've ever encountered, eclipsed in negativity only by the infamous Hash Animation Master community. Today, Lightwave is merely an afterthought. The official website has the latest version as 2015, and the latest uh, features are things that have existed in other software for some time. It's sad to see one of the most innovative companies out there fall victim to hubris and an inability to change with the times. Let's let what happened to Lightwave serve as a lesson to developers and the user community.